Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, I did it. I finally did it. I went through and I made the notes. This is chapter, or this is Accelerate, Science of Lean Software and DevOps, Building and Scaling High-Performing Technology Organizations. It's an award-winning book. Can you see that? Okay. And then here are the authors. And um, the way this is going to go... We're going to record these privately so nobody can come in to chat. It's just you and me talking. And I'm going to go through the book as best as I can, describing what I'm finding as I go through chapter by chapter. I'm going to pull out the highlights and talk about what we're finding. This book comes highly recommended in the industry. If you are a developer, um, this is a very, it's a very popular piece of book because it is well you'll see why you'll see why if you stick around so um, I'm really excited to share it with you I've just really restructured the repo that had it was previously the clean architecture repo I've restructured to contain multiple books because we're going to have multiple ongoing threads to keep it interesting for me um, I'm going to be reading a few different books at the same time and getting to them as I can. So I'm going to stay sharp on Accelerate and the other ones, as I read the chapters, I'll produce the produce the notes and, and summaries and, and read them out. But really, we're going to drive on Accelerate right now. Pedal on the gas, you know, the metaphor. Boom, pedal down. Um, so... Let's start by we'll look at the the repo restructure. So previously you might be used to clean architecture being here and that has all moved into a subfolder where we have this is this is the old readme and the links were updated so you can we can talk specifically about all of that. Not important anymore. That one's done and we're moving forward with Accelerate. So the book by Dr. Forsgren, Jez Humble, hum, Humble, and Gene Kim, based on rigorous scientific research in the style of epidemiology, I think is what they, so they did a cross-sectional study to, we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it, it comes up later. So tens of thousands of organizations over from 2014 to 2017 this is what is contained in the book. And uh, so we go into, we've got a landing page for Accelerate itself. And you can see this is the weekly schedule. We're going to, we can, you can link out to the book and you can find it online. I think this one is really worth picking up. You can get this at a library and read it. You can, anyways, it's, it's really worth digging into is my understanding and uh, these are the these are the weeks as they uh, as they came out of the table of contents what you will notice if you buy your own copy of the book let me switch over to um, oh that's not it there we go um, what you'll notice is there are there is a large section in there called the research so Effectively, what I'm doing is I'm taking just part one, which is the details, and I'm taking a few of the chapters that I think are going to be interesting at the end, and I'm going to go through that because I think that's the most important stuff. And if you want to dive into the research, you can buy the book or you can get it from the library. And um, uh, this is obviously going to be my interpretation of what I read and I'm going to be pulling out the things that I'm that I find most interesting again you can read the book yourself and go through it but this is hopefully to give you a sense of some of the things that you can do to improve your professional practice and in my repeating it to you I'm hopefully going to be learning it a little better than I would if I just read this through maybe a little tired and stuff so it's it's 
partly I'm doing this just for me to read my own notes. Um, and partly I hope that it improves your professional practice in, in doing this. So let's jump right into the introduction. Remember, this is on GitHub. It's my notes are all MIT licensed. So you can go ahead, you can share this with your friends, you can share this with your organizations. Uh, you can send me pull requests, you can send me cookies. Um, but actually, I don't eat carbs. So that's probably not very good. Uh, don't send cookies, um, virtual cookies, doesn't matter. Anyways, so week one, the title of the book, Accelerate, I've already read that, so we'll skip that. So um, we'll start in the forward. The forward by uh, Martin Fowler it has, there's, there is a pull quote from one of the studies that says, sort of the conclusion of this was, we can now assert, I'll highlight that for you so you can see it. We can now assert with confidence that high IT performance, information technology performance, correlates with strong business performance, helping to boost productivity, profitability, and market share. So really important to think about that. If you have a high-performing technology organization, your business is going to do better. You, you're going to produce more code, obviously. Uh, uh, you're going to be more profitable. And over time, the surprise and delight that you are able to deliver to your customers via being a high-performing organization will, in turn, increase your actual market share because people will talk to each other and they'll say, oh, who do you like for this? And who do you? and they'll say, oh, well, you should use this one because they're really good. And never mind. Well, well, that's that's it. But that's it. That's the point of the book. The point of the book, the point of Accelerate at its core is saying, first of all, information technology systems are the key driver to success in our did in our expanding digital world but more than that more than that it's um yeah that's enough that's enough it's um so oh oh yeah more than that we talk about what defines and what differentiates these high performing organizations from the rest of the pack. And so it really gets into specifics, really gets into details about all of the things that are so important to making your projects and your company uh, and your, your business more successful overall. And I'm glad I remembered that second part because it was really important. Uh, so here we go. Um, In, in So this is all stuff that's coming from, uh, there are two forwards, one by Martin Fowler, uh, who I believe is the same fellow who wrote this book called Refactoring. Um, and then the other one is by somebody named Courtney Kissler, who is the VP Digital Platform Engineering at Nike. So it's sort of, you've got uh, luminaries from the IT world telling us about how great this thing is and and. Courtney Kistler specifically is not just a research scientist type who is really into the technology side, but she's going to be deeply involved in the business side as well. So we've got this really great mix of bringing together hard science and uh, proper, intense Fortune 500 business. Uh, I, I'm sure Nike is the number one sporting brand in the world, um, at least by market cap. And so anyways, let's, let's talk about the things that we found that they are telling us in the forward. And then we'll talk about specifics, uh, about the things that we're going to learn over the next, I believe it'll probably be 15 weeks. Um, although there it is, it will be a bit dynamic. Uh, I will take breaks as as time goes on, you know, Christmas is in the middle here, so I'll 
have maybe a week or two off there and things like that. But we're just, we're going to, we're going to make it through. We're going to record this content. We're going to share the content and by not, anyways, that's enough. That's enough. We'll keep going on talking about what we want to talk about. So in the forward, this is, these are the blocks that we're talking about here. Um, highly effective organ organizations take about an hour to get from pushing a commit into your main line or merging a pull request to that very same code is running in production. And it, if you think about that, that's pretty staggering. It, and it means that they can update their code many times a day. It means, uh, and what we find is that this doesn't cost them stability. They're not moving fast and breaking things as maybe um, was popularized in 2007 by Facebook. It, they actually are able to move fast because of the stability that they build into their systems. And these are driven by automated testing, CI uh, CD, and in fact, the organizations who are highest performing, their deploys fail at a rate that is much, much lower than typical organizations in IT. On top of that, on top of that, the failures that high performing organizations have are usually fixed within about an hour. So these, these teams don't have the same downtime. Um, if you think about a time that you maybe has pushed an error into production, um, it might just be that they say, oh, let's revert that commit and work on a fix. But at the same time, even that can just be flipping a switch and it goes bing, bing, and it's in and out and it's done and you move forward. So there is this, there was this notion, I guess, I, I, or at least Fowler says that there was this notion at one time that you had to choose between something that was highly stable or something that was fast, uh, or, or you, so you had to choose between speed and stability in your deployments. And that's been disproven quite extensively in this research where we say, actually, speed requires stability. So if you want to go fast, you have to go stable. Now you can go slow and stable too, like, you know, legacy providers. But if you are, if you want to go fast, there is no choice but to go stable. And I think if, if we harp on Facebook a bit with their move fast and break things motto, you'll find that, you know, they, kind of quietly updated that a few years later. And, and I think they just keep banging the drum that they say like, no, we don't do that anymore. We do. We, I think it's now they say move fast with a solid infrastructure or something like that. So really important to consider that speed requires stability. That's the only way you can go fast. And if we go back and think about the clean architecture series that we just finished, he has a similar statement in there that the only way to go fast is to go cleanly. And so these things are going hand in hand. We're getting this from multiple angles. So a strong engineering practice gives you both speed and stability. Um, and that's, and that's the, that's the story. The second one was, uh, the second forward came from Courtney Kistler, as we've mentioned, and she says that it, it's the time, the time is now, or probably the time was five years ago, for businesses to focus on digital as the growth engine f for their business. Um, and w what does that precisely mean? I think if we think about the scale and the reach and the, our ability to get out to more people. Um, now I, I, I work at a company called Zen Insurance and uh, uh, we sell commercial 
insurance to small businesses. So like your plumber, if you have a plumber who's a contractor, he's going to need, they, not he, but they, they would need um, uh, insurance to make sure, you know, that they're indemnified against any screwing up anything. And the old system for this commercial insurance is you go to a an, a commercial insurance broker and you sit down with them, you fill out some forms. So you've got to be there in person doing this stuff and, and you give them the form and they go somewhere and they go through it and they enter it into their data system or they mail it to somebody or they fax it. It goes, sits there for a couple of weeks while somebody goes through it piece by piece, comes back two weeks later to two months later, you're able to start your business, right? Whereas we've got this system at Zensurance where that same person would go doop, 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 and they plug it all in in their, in their website, um, in our website, and it gives them a price at the end of the filling in the form. And um, typically, typically is that what's what, what we aim for. Um, and you can just see that the difference between you've got to wait two months to start your business and you can have your business up and running at the end of as, as soon as you finish typing in the last digit of your credit card number, it's, it's a totally different ball game. And so focusing on digital, the scale and the reach of what we can do goes all across Canada. So, you know, uh, whereas a small mom and pop insurance brokerage who does that old two month style, they can reach a handful of people in the town that they live in. So, you know, you know, it's, it's just a different ball game. Um, now the old model of it systems in the corporate world would optimize for cost because let's face it, programmers, engineers, uh, system administrators, all of the above, QA, all of the above, they're all very expensive. And so what you want to do is find a way to minimize the cost of all of that. But as it turns out, and so you would optimize your your hiring and your decision-making for cost. Whereas what we're finding is if you optimize for speed, you can shift software faster. You can more quickly realize and anticipate the needs of your customer and and that leads to this word of mouth effect or just this this network effect of by providing incredible service and by doing things really fast and getting in front of the customer first you are most likely to succeed uh and and capture the market so we have the new model of business going forward of successful businesses, right? Because not all businesses are going to maintain this new model. And if they don't, they'll likely fall behind. So the new model, optimize for speed. And if it costs more, it has to cost more. But capturing more of the market is the way to go here. Now, we're going to bring back up the notes because we are on to the next session. We're 20 minutes in. Oof, I guess I'm going at an okay pace. This is okay. So we're going to dive over the course of the next probably 14 or 15 weeks. We're going to dive into, there are five major categories of improvements and each of those is subdivided into subpoints and we'll talk about each of those subpoints sort of in order as they come up in the system uh in total 24 24 capabilities so we've got the continuous delivery capability we've got High quality architecture. If you're interested in architecture, I just finished 14 weeks on the book Clean Architecture, which is still sitting right here on my couch beside me because I literally an hour ago just put the final 
episode of that one out and this is the first episode of the next so um continuous delivery architecture product and process lean management and monitoring and then cultural factors so what and we'll again this is over a longer period of time but this would be the uh five minute summary what are the things that drive continuous delivery you've got solid version control that's git svn perforce whatever you're using you've got to have version control deploy you've got to have automatic deployment you've got to have continuous integration which is uh, we define these things later so just this is like reading a table of contents the things that we will talk about um, trunk based development which I don't actually know what that is, so I'm really looking forward to that week. Uh, automated testing, which is should be obvious, but it is not always pursued very well by people. Test data management. I'm not sure what that is. Excited for that. Shift left on security. Um, I do know what that is, but I have forgotten. So we'll get a great reminder there. And continuous delivery. So that is separate from continuous integration. Um, there we go. So under architecture capabilities, we've got loosely coup coupled architecture and we have empowered teams, which is great because again, I just finished talking about architecture for 14 weeks. I'm really excited. I, I have some great examples, I think, out in industry, we can look at uh, companies probably like Netflix is, my under, to my understanding, a, a really solid example of something that is very loosely coupled, very high decision-making capability on each individual team, but they push in the same direction. So um, really an interesting place to look at there. I'm sure there are some other case studies that we can try and find there. Uh, who else do we have? So, product and process capabilities. Don't know what all of these are. We're going to learn. So, we've got customer feedback. That one's probably obvious. Um, value stream. I don't know what that is, but we'll find out. Small batches and experimentation. These are the things that make for good businesses. Interesting. We'll find out more. Lean management. So, a change approval process, monitoring, proactive notification, uh, WIP limit. So WIP is work in progress, work in pro and visualizing work. These are really interesting as well. And again, we'll talk about them in order as they come up. Um, and some more stuff. We've got Westrom organizational culture strong support for learning, collaboration among teams, job satisfaction, and transformational leadership. So anyways, these are the, these are the things we're going to talk about. Um, I think they're really interesting. And this is stuff that is, again, really important. We'll talk, I mean, we'll talk about it again in just a second, because it is in this week's notes. But important to note that this stuff is scientifically valid or statistically valid i don't you know it's i mean it's social science social science is a science uh, i have a degree in social science i have a psychology degree so i should anyways back to so here we go so now we're back on to the back on track here so the the, the research is showing the research shows that companies who can accelerate their delivery of software can drive results that increase profitability, productivity, and market share. Again, we want to talk about that. That's as we, you know, as we perform at higher and higher levels, we will capture more and more of the business. Really important. This drives, uh, this in turn drives uh, effectiveness, efficiency, and customer satisfaction. So if you're moving faster, you're getting things in front of the customer faster, the customer is happier, they stay with you more. 
the results that we find are statistically significant. We're going to say it again and again because it matters that they have done. Um, well, I hope I have it highlighted in here. I might have left out the exact numbers as part of the stuff you don't exactly need to know. Here we go. But here it is right here. 23,000 survey responses from all around the world, 2,000 unique organizations, um, from some with under five employees, some with as many as 10,000 employees. So like this is big research, right? This is a lot of stuff. And if you are talking about getting inside information from the Googles and the Nikes and the, the whatever of the world you, uh, down to places as, as about the size as insurance and even smaller, like brand new startups out of nowhere are, are talking about this stuff. And, um, the research is finding, or the research is saying that all software and this is echoed actually in, in um, this is also echoed in clean architecture, that software is an exercise in continuous improvement and continuous development. These, none of these things are one and done. Um, research is, shows that the people or the teams who are the best keep getting better and better and better and better year after year. Um, and the worst of the pack are falling further and further behind. So it's really important for us to stay on top of that list above that I went through, the list of things that make us uh, high performing organizations. Um, I have this in bold, so I'm going to bring it back on screen. But improvement is possible for everyone. It's possible for every team that we come across. Anything that we work on, if we are if we are the worst, the ones that are falling farther and farther behind, we actually can make an improvement if we have, there's a single caveat here, as long as, as long as you have re, as long as you have leadership that buys into the idea that we can get better if we invest in it. Uh, we need to keep the support up for getting better we have to include time actions and resources we have to we only get better if we invest in getting better and in the spirit of broad competition out in the world i'm going to try and fi finish up in three minutes at, so that we are uh keeping these shorter more watchable um but i am going to read out the sort of things that we i'll read out this list and then we'll be done um Anyways, so, you know, you, your management, your leadership team, the C-level, the C-suite, everybody has to be committed to these things or you, you're just, in a, you know, you quit your job and go some, find somewhere that does support this stuff because, you know, you're on a losing team if they're playing like that. So, over the years of conducting the study as we said 23,000 responses we had a bunch of things so these are the questions that were asked uh, what does it mean to deliver software can we measure the delivery of software how does software delivery impact organizations does culture matter so if, if you think about culture you've got maybe somewhere like Basecamp that recently had 30 three percent 32 percent of their staff quit when they outlawed uh when they banned political discussion at work um versus where you know somewhere that has a great culture who knows uh does it exist so does culture matter uh and and which and so in 2014 they're saying which technical practices matter and remember that's how we're building this list because they in 2014, they're saying what matters. And then they take the results and they say, in 2015, they say, is this stuff really the stuff that matters? What about this? And so in 2015, they say, well, so does automation matter? 
How, what about lean management? What is lean management? Does it matter? How does management affect burnout? Are you going to burn out easier if you have crappy management? Yeah, right. That makes sense. Um, does security now, so in 2016, we start focusing on security. Great in time for the, for the age of uh, ransomware. So does security help process or slow it down? Does trunk-based development, again, I still don't know what that means. Does that improve delivery? And does strong technical practice encourage company loyalty? So do you stay longer as a developer at an organization where they do things well and where you can see that you do things well and where you can feel that you are actively learning or, you know, do you bounce for a place that sucks? I don't know. Who knows? And these are the study questions that they ask. So finally, 2017, the end of the research that we have in the book, what, architect what architectural practices drive software performance? How does transformational leadership affect delivery? And does this all hold true for the nonprofit sector? So those are the things that we're talking about over the coming weeks. And it's, I think, pretty exciting. It's a very highly recommended book. I'm a minute and 30 over. And so to that end, I'm going to say that we should take off. And I hope that you keep coming back. Bye.